Do you feel your in-person and online presentations, meetings and trainings need to be spiced up? Would you like to consistently deliver engaging and interactive presentations where your audience lights up and gives you amazing reviews? Well, today I'd like to share our secret of achieving 4.9 out of 5 stars in Trustpilot with 95% of our reviews, which are 5 stars. The instructional model, our secret sauce, is called the 4 C's model for designing training inspired by the book Training from the Back of the Room by Sharon Bowman. You can use this model for online presentations, meetings, and is a gold standard for designing training, both in-room and virtual. Hi, my name is Anil Jai Singh. I'm a certified Scrum trainer with Scrum Alliance, a certified Training from the Back of the Room trainer, Chief Product Manager for Concepts and Beyond Inc., and an adjunct faculty with NYU's Program of Project Management. In fact, all my YouTube videos are designed using the 4C model. Stay with us till the end of this video so you can learn why are we giving this secret sauce away to you today. Let's take an example. Let's say you want to teach adult caretakers who are your audience and babysitters the code of ethics. The learning outcome for the trainer is to ensure that your audience can explain and list the code of ethics. If you haven't heard about learning outcomes, I'm sharing a link to the Bloom's taxonomy in the description below. Learning outcomes is what you want your learners to achieve at the end of your training. Learning outcomes start with an action verb that can be measured. The verb cannot be passive, like learn or know, which cannot be measured. Learning outcomes should start with verbs like explain, list, define, create, analyze, which are all action-oriented verbs that can be measured. Now I like you to grab a BMW. A BMW stands for blank material for writing. It doesn't have to be pink like mine. Fold your BMW into half. And then fold it one more time. When you open the page, you will notice that there are four quadrants. On the first quadrant, write down the words connection, C1. In the next one, write down concepts. The third quadrant, write down concrete practice. And finally, the last quadrant, write down conclusion. If possible, break down your presentation or training module into 30 minute segments. For my code of ethics training, my total time for training is estimated for 30 minutes total. Use sticky notes to write down each technique and tool and content that I'll share with you and add it to the relevant quadrant. Let's start with the first C, connections. This stage is about building bridges between the learner and the new content. Before diving into the topic, spend time drawing out learners, existing knowledge and experiences. Ask questions like, what do you already know about this topic? Or how have you dealt with this in the past? This initial connection helps learners relate the new material to something familiar, setting the stage for effective learning. And by connecting with others in the classroom, the learners feel that they're psychologically safe and they're in a safe space. So as a trainer, by using connections, you are creating a safe space for the learners. For example, the technique I want to use for my C1 is a pair share. I will ask my learners to pair up with each other. This could be pairing with each other in an in-person training or Zoom breakout room and an online training. So write down the technique on the first sticky note and stick it on C1. The technique being pair share. My tool will be the Zoom breakout room and I will seed their conversation with the question. So write down the tool of Zoom breakout room on the second sticky note and add it to C1. The question is the content of my C1, which is, what are some rules your parents had in your home while you were growing up? So write down the content on the third sticky note and write down the question. The C1 does two things. Give my learners something they can easily relate to or answer and also do it in the privacy with one or two or more participants instead of with everybody in the class. So they feel psychologically safe. Number two is concepts. The stage involves introducing a new skill or a new knowledge, but don't just lecture. Remember, learning is not a spectator sport. Involve your learners in activities that will help them discover and understand the new concepts. Think of interactive presentations, group discussions, or problem-solving exercises. The key here is active engagement, not a lecture. Let's just say that there are six code of ethics and we create a graphic organizer that has a picture that represents each one of those codes. And I have six pictures. 
Some effective techniques I've used is interactive lectures along with the graphic organizer, where the learners write or draw as the trainer speaks or use a concept center where learners can match different concepts and then check if they're correct by opening an answer key. So the technique I'm going to be using is a graphic organizer. The tool I'm going to be using is a PowerPoint slide or an online whiteboard like Miro or Mural. And the content that I'm going to teach as a trainer is the six code of ethics. While I'm teaching the six code of ethics, the learner is writing on the graphic organizer all the different code of ethics uh, and connecting it with the drawing that's on the graphic organizer. Now we are on to the third C, concrete practice. Here the learners get hands-on experience or practice what you taught them in the C2. Design activities where they can apply what they learned in the concepts or C2. This could be through simulations, role plays or real life projects. This practical application cements their learning, builds confidence and enables the trainer to measure that the learner has met the learning objective. For my training, I will create a jigsaw puzzle that my learners need to put together to solve to get the pictures of the code of ethics. My technique will be a jigsaw puzzle. My tool will be either a paper puzzle or a puzzle on a whiteboard. And finally, my content for my learners will be to solve the jigsaw puzzle and share their answers in a pair share or a group share. Number four, conclusions. Finally, we arrive at the conclusions or C4. This is the reflection stage where learners review what they learned and plan how they will use it. Encourage them to share their takeaways and next steps. This might seem like a simple step, but it's a powerful one. It helps learners internalize their learning and sets them up for success in applying it. For my training, I will use a technique called ball toss. The tool will be either a physical ball or a virtual ball on Zoom. And the content that I'm gonna be sharing with them is to take turns throwing the ball and each person catches it and will share one code of ethics that will apply to them in their job. And that's it, the four C's model, connection, concepts, concrete practice, and conclusions. A simple yet powerful approach to design engaging learner-centric training. Remember, effective training is not about how much information you can deliver, but about how much learning you can facilitate. So incorporate the four C's in your training design and see the magic happen. So why did I share our secret sauce? It's because in our training from the back of the room, in person and virtual online classes, we go beyond the four C's model to mentor you on your design and help guide you how you can build an entire presentation or training of multiple days using a series of learning outcomes and presentations or training designs. For our training from the back of the room training, please visit the link in the description below or scan the QR code. Until next time, keep empowering learners. If you enjoy this video, like it, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you next time.